starting now. Okay, so for anyone watching on YouTube, sorry, I forgot to record the first two hours. Um, we are now on page 59. Do's and don'ts. Uh, and notice where they put the apostrophe. So for the word do's, they put the apostrophe here um, to make sure that you don't think this is a new word that is spelled D-O-S. But on the right, they put the apostrophe in the normal place. And after the word, there is no apostrophe. Because two apostrophes might be confusing. In fact, these two apostrophes are doing different things. This one is telling you, or rather it is separating the two parts of this word so that you don't think it's one word. But on the right, this apostrophe is omitting a letter. O, right? Do not. The O is gone. So these two apostrophes are doing different things. Okay, so some things that you should do when giving a speech. Smile, yes. Um, in a Western or American setting, you should always smile. That's a good rule of thumb. Western, especially American people, like to smile a lot. In fact, some Americans will think that if you don't smile, you might be angry or bored or uncomfortable. Uh, many Americans tend to think that if nothing is wrong, people will generally smile. And this is also why some Americans are against wearing masks, even during the pandemic. Uh, for many Americans and Westerners, being able to see your mouth is very important. Second point, use gestures, body language. As I'm sure you know, most communication is through body language. So even if your audience does not understand a word or is not very clear about the information you are giving, if you add body language, it helps them understand what you're trying to say. Every person has different kinds of body language, but the body language for each person tends to be consistent. When one person gives different speeches about different things, the person usually will use the same kind of body language for the same kinds of communication. Maybe uh, they will use their body language in one way, to present new information, another way to present examples, another way to ask questions, another way to tell jokes, and so on. So body language is itself a consistent system of communication. And so using body language when you are giving a speech can help your audience understand your speech. Third one, look at your audience. You don't have to look at each individual person, but you should let the audience feel like you are not entirely ignoring the audience. Here's a secret. When you are in the audience and the speaker looks at another person or look somewhere in the audience and the speaker is not looking at you, you feel like that's normal, right? There are so many people in the audience. 
what are the odds that the singer will look directly at me? How unlikely is that? So if the speaker looks at the audience but not at you, particularly, that's normal. Therefore, when you are the speaker, you don't have to look at any single person. You only have to look in the general direction of the audience. And everybody will think that you are looking at somebody else, when in fact you're not looking at anyone at all. Sometimes looking into another person's face or looking into their eyes can be distracting because when you look at somebody, that person is also looking at you. And when someone looks at you, it might distract you, might make you lose your train of thought, uh, might make you lose focus when you're giving your speech. So instead of looking at specific people, you can just look in the general direction of the audience. Next one, use an outline. Um, earlier it said to state your main points and review your main points. These are actually just your outline. Your outline basically says, this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, and so we talked about this earlier. This is very important to make sure your audience does not get confused. Last, practice. Practice is very important. You can practice alone. You can practice in front of a mirror. You can practice in front of some friends. If you are more experienced, you can even sit and practice in your mind. Studies have shown that thinking about something, or sorry, thinking about doing something uses the same part of your brain as actually doing it. So some athletes before a competition they don't want to waste energy by actually practicing. So instead, they will sit and think about their movements, about their actions, about their strategy. They will practice in their mind. And that does help, actually. So there are many different ways to practice. The point of practice is not to help you remember every single word. There are only very few situations when you have to give a speech that is exactly correct in every single word. Uh, if you are giving a speech in class and your teacher has a copy of your speech, if you are giving a TED talk because TED Talks control the time very closely. You cannot use too much time. Or if you are a political leader and the media, the news, have a copy of your speech. These are the few times when you have to give a speech that is exactly the same as you write it. But most of the time, your speech only has to be generally the same. It doesn't have to be the same word for word. So practicing helps you remember your key points and it helps you get used to the experience of actually saying those points out loud. It's one thing to think about your ideas it's another thing entirely to have to say them out loud. They're two very different experiences. And this is what practice is for, to help you get used to saying it out loud. On the right hand side, we have some things that you should not do. First, slouch. The word slouch means to have bad posture. 
身体姿势呃不正。So like you're not standing straight, or if you're sitting down, you're not sitting up. You're kind of like leaning or like、um, resting on a table or something. When you give a speech, you should try to stand up straight or sit up straight. First of all, because it gives you more air, you have better control over your air. Secondly, because it presents more energy. When the speaker looks like they have more energy, it looks like the speaker is more interested. And if the speaker is interested, then the audience. We'll see.、Huh, maybe this is something that I should pay attention to. Maybe it is worth my time and energy. So stand up straight or sit up straight. Next, do、uh, do not mumble. Mumble in Chinese is nanazi, which means you should speak clearly. Just like I always speak clearly when I'm teaching this class, I know that you may not be very good at English listening, so I try my best to speak clearly, so that even if you are not familiar with the word I am using, maybe the clear sound of the word will help you remember that word. Will help you to understand what I am saying. If you mumble, it's harder for the audience to hear you, and if the audience can't hear you, then they can't understand you. Next one: Don't stare out the door windows or at the ceiling. This tells the audience that you're bored. You don't want to be giving this speech. You don't care whether the audience is listening, and so if you're bored and you don't care, why should the audience care? And so the audience will lose interest in what you are trying to say. Next one: Don't ramble. We talked about this earlier. Rambling is to say without direction, without a point. When you're giving a speech, you should have a point. You should know what you want to talk about, and you should actually talk about it. Stay on point. Don't ramble. And then the last one: don't say that's all. Uh, or in Chinese, just that. Right, that's not how you should end the speech.、Uh, you can say,、uh, "That's my speech."、Uh, do you have any questions? You can say, "Thank you for listening." Don't say, "Thank you for your listening." Just say, "Thank you for listening." If you end by saying "that's all" or "that's it" or "I'm finished," that tells the audience you don't know how to end your speech, which means you don't have a good conclusion. If you if you don't have a good conclusion, that probably means you're not quite sure why your speech is important. You don't know what you want to give the audience. You don't know what you want your audience to learn, to take home with them.、Uh, in other words, if you end your speech without a good ending, the audience will think your speech is not that important. So try to find some way to. End on a note of the future. Push your audience into the future. Tell them why your speech was worth listening to.
Okay. Uh, in the conclusion, first it asks you two questions to help you think back on all of the things that the essay talked about. Now that you know these things, right, so it helps you to remember those things. And then it adds this point. There's no way to get rid of all your nervousness. Um, so this tells you that simply reading and understanding this essay is not enough. You should not expect to feel no nervousness at all. This essay can only help. It cannot get rid of all of your nervousness. So the next time you have to give a speech, be prepared to face nervousness even when you are prepared. Hopefully you will feel less nervous when you step on stage. Uh, the word on stage is actually one word. On stage is a preposition, jie xi si. Sorry, that's not right. On stage is an adverb, fu si. It's an adverb of location, di fang fu si. Right, where are you? You are on stage, one word. The opposite is off stage. When you build it when I saw you are off stage. Okay, by being well prepared and taking the time to prepare and practice, these two mean the same thing. Taking time to prepare and practice is the same thing as being well prepared. These two are the same thing. And notice it says taking the time. Why the time? Because this is time that you need in order to prepare and practice. This is the specific time you need to prepare and practice. We mentioned before that the word the is a specific something. As it took in the song. So this time is specific to the needed time for preparation and practice. So you say the time. Uh, and then the essay also reminds you this is not just about English speaking, it's also about speaking in Chinese. Giving a speech in Chinese follows basically the same rules. And the last sentence pushes the reader into the future. Try your hand at means to give something a try. Or just try. Now it's your turn to try. Okay, so do you have questions about this essay? Okay, now that we know what this essay is talking about, let's listen to the person reading this essay. If you are listening at home, uh, you will not hear this. For some reason, Teams does not uh, give you my computer sound. So you're going to have to listen to this on your own. Sorry about that. For everyone else, let's listen.
Okay. Let's move on to page 16. Vocabulary. Uh, we have already seen most of these words. Um, apprehension. The word apprehend today means catch or understand. Or it used to mean to be able to predict. So it has an idea about the future. So to be, uh, to be apprehensive or to feel apprehension means that you are nervous about the future. You have anxiety about something that is going to happen soon. This is slightly different from the word anxious. Anxious is the adjective of anxiety. But anxiety means nervous, whereas anxious can sometimes be positive. Anxious can mean that you cannot wait for something to begin, or you cannot wait for something to happen. I am anxious to begin. I am anxious to leave the classroom. These are positive meanings. But apprehension is negative. I am apprehensive about something, which means you don't want that thing to happen. Next, audio. The main part of your essay or the main part of your speech. Conclusion, the ending part of your speech or essay. Dread a very strong and deep fear. Majority, most of, uh, not the biggest part, or sometimes the most people. The opposite of majority is minority, a smaller number of people, not more than half. So majority, dosu, minority, sashu. Outline a plan for your essay or speech, or the basic structure. Um, it's called an outline because uh, this is taken from drawing. Before you, you draw or you paint something, you might uh, use a pencil to draw the basic shapes. Those are the outline of your picture, the basic shapes. So in speech and writing, an outline is the basic shape of your speech or essay. Get rid of, to discard, to do away with. Sometimes to throw away. Mention, to say something very briefly. So if you mention something, you may not explain in detail. Maybe you just say it uh, to bring it up or to remind your listener. But when you mention something, you usually do not explain it in detail. Ramble, to go everywhere without purpose or direction. To try one's hand at something just means to try something. Catchy, like a, a phrase or a song, hard to forget. Dry, the opposite of wet, so no water. Dry can also sometimes be used to describe a kind of humor. In Chinese, we call this the 
but in Chinese in English we call it dry humor. Long-winded. Uh, a speech or an essay that goes for a long time without a lot of important information. Memorable, easy to remember, or sometimes worth remembering. Something important that you should remember. Barely, which means hardly. Sometimes it means just, only just. Sometimes it means not. Mianchang. Butterflies in your stomach means you feel nervous uh, in your stomach. Get in trouble. Face difficulty uh, or you cause trouble. To keep your weight down, Mirror, Mumble, to speak not clearly, Palm, slouch, to have bad posture, Stage fright, to be afraid of going on stage. Sweating, to have sweat or to sweat easily or have your, you know, be covered in sweat. Does it get hot? Throat, hold on. This could refer to both parts of your throat. Can this is a Can this is a a trim and fit figure just means that this person looks thin and healthy. Okay, do you have questions about these words? Okay, let's do the exercises on pages 60 and uh, 61. So these nine questions. I will give you, it's nine questions, I'll give you five minutes and then we will compare answers.
Okay, let's compare answers. One, have you ever tried your hand at rollerblading? Rollerblading in its island. So even though the correct answer is try your hand at, it's kind of weird because rollerblading, you don't use your hands, you use your feet. But anyway, that's the phrase. Try your hand out. Have you ever tried your hand out? Two, I always feel apprehensive. Actually, apprehensive. When I have to sing in front of people. Three, do you ever feel well, well, maybe it's not apprehensive. Maybe it's uh, stage fright. I always feel stage fright when I have to sing in front of people. Three, do you ever feel butterflies in your stomach before a blind date? A blind date is a date with someone you have never met before. You're meeting this person for the first time. Uh, so do you feel nervous? Do you feel butterflies in your stomach? Number four, McDonald's has had some catchy slogans over the years. I mean, so, uh, 他们的历史中曾经有过几个朗朗上口的标语 Catchy slogans So over the years Over the years means in its history So not recent years, but in its entire history Number five I see, he's so cute. Did he mention me at all when you talked to him? Mention me. Number six. The majority of students don't enjoy speaking in public. Out of interest and the majority of students. Number seven, I hate professors who give long-winded and rambling lectures. Long-winded and rambling. Of course, you can flip the order. You can say rambling and long-winded. Same thing. Number eight. I can't stop thinking of that new song. It's very memorable. I think we should switch. Okay, so number eight is catchy. Number four, McDonald's, is memorable. Both are okay, but catchy fits better with song. Uh, and so slogans would be memorable. You want people to remember a slogan. That's the point. So number four is a memorable slogan. Number eight is a very catchy song. Uh, I would not say thinking of. To think of something means to remember, in the sense that you have forgotten and then you remember again, and then you forget, and then you remember, and then you forget, and then you remember. I would say think about. To think about means you keep on thinking about it. You never forget. And number nine. 
I've been sick for two weeks now. I just can't. Get rid of this cold. I can't get rid of this cold. Another thing you can put here is beat. I just can't beat this cold. Uh, or I can't get over this cold. Get over. Uh, but here the correct answer is get rid of. Okay, do you have questions? If not, let's end here uh, and we'll continue next week.